Each airport in the National Airspace System has unique and distinct characteristics, which can sometimes lead pilots to use the wrong surface in taxi, takeoff, or landing operations. Let's take a look at some of those tricky areas from the flight deck. Bill and Hillary Clinton National, or Adams Field, is a medium-sized, multi-use airport located on the eastern edge of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. There is Associate Class Charlie airspace that first-time visitors should familiarize themselves with during pre-flight planning. The traffic mix consists of almost every aspect of aviation, from air carrier to business and general aviation and military. This mix of pilot experience and aircraft capability make this airport a challenging environment for pilots and controllers alike. The airport configuration consists of a set of parallel runways 4, 2, 2 left and right and a non-intersecting runway 1836. A complex taxiway system provides access to all terminals, ramps and services located between the parallel runways between runways 4 left, 2 to right, and 1836, and west of runway 1836. Close inspection of the airport diagram during pre-flight planning will help the first-time visitor understand and feel more comfortable while moving on the surface. As with any situation this complex, if you are in doubt of your clearance or don't understand an instruction, Ask the tower. They are there to help. Arriving for the first time can be challenging for several reasons. The first being the location and runway configuration of North Little Rock Airport, or ORK. Located just six miles north of and slightly right of the final approach course for runway 18, it has often been mistaken for the larger national airport. This may be caused by the fact that the runway configurations are nearly identical. For this reason, controllers are extra vigilant when landing runway 18. During night operations, the airport can be a challenge to locate with the surrounding lights of the city washing out the runway and taxiway lighting. When approaching the field from the east and utilizing the ILS runway 22 left approach, the localizer is offset 1.87 degrees to the left. It's noticeable enough that some pilots have questioned whether the localizer was working correctly while following the guidance. Also at night, due to the sighting of the airport beacon, it needed to be shielded on the south side to avoid blinding the controllers in the tower. Consequently, when looking for the airport beacon at night, it is not visible approaching from the south. Hotspot 1 is located at the approach ends of runways 36 and 4 left. It is listed as a wrong runway departure risk due to the close proximity of the runway ends and the co-location of the hold short lines for each runway. To avoid making this mistake, pilots might verify their aircraft heading with the runway cleared to depart. They should match. It is also a concern for aircraft arriving on left downwind for runway 36 or right downwind for runway 4 left. Pilots turning base leg for each of these runways have attempted to land on the wrong surface. For example, the aircraft is on left downwind for runway 36, turns base, and sees the approach end of runway 4 left, lines up with it, attempts to land on 4 left. One strategy to avoid this type of mistake would be to verify the landing runway heading with heading to the runway cleared. Again, 
they should match. Another area of concern, not listed as a hotspot, but troublesome nevertheless, can be found on the west side of the airport. Aircraft parked on any of these ramp areas and ready to taxi for departure have misidentified taxiway alpha. For example, an aircraft parked on the north end across from taxiway Kilo and cleared runway 36 taxi via alpha have crossed taxiway alpha onto taxiway Kilo and turned onto runway 1836 thinking the runway was taxiway alpha. Complete understanding of taxi clearance, including route, turns, and hold short instructions prior to beginning taxi will help avoid a potentially serious runway incursion. Use of the airport diagram or moving map display, along with increased awareness for taxiway markings above ground signs and at some locations above ground lighting or wigwag lights, will go a long way in avoiding this type of error. Other things that the first-time visitor might want to be aware of include an increased amount of migratory bird activity, particularly just before sunset and just after sunrise, as well as rising terrain, especially south of the airport. Being aware of the hotspots and other configuration issues at Little Rock will help pilots make better decisions and along with the air traffic control tower, keep the operation safe and efficient. We hope this short video helps you prepare for your trip to the Bill and Hillary Clinton National Airport or Adams Field. It's always better to know before you go.